Let's solve one more Excel test that came up recently in a job interview. We have here many different questions. We have questions that involve basic stuff, and we also have questions that require more dexterity to use the functions that we need to solve the questions. So let's start with the first question that is basically the question A, that is solve the mathematical operations. And here we have the column A, the column B, what we need to do in the operation column, and also here the result, where we need to input the correct result through a formula or a function. So let's say the first row here, the first operation is asking us to add A to B. We can simply use a sum function in Excel, or we can actually use a formula to add up values. If I need to add A to B, basically I need to take here the A value that is equal to 10 and add to the B value that is equal to 15. Here in the result, I'm going to input the equal sign and then A add to B. And uh, we need to be mindful here because to add up values through a formula in Excel, we're going to need to use the plus sign, okay? If I press enter, okay, I just got the first result. So this is just basic stuff using formulas. Equal sign. The second operation that we need to do here is divide B by A. Okay, so B is 200 divided by 40. Equal sign 200 divided by 40. Enter. Here we got 5 as result. Of course, 5 times 40 is equal to 200. The, the third one is multiply A by A. Here we need to pay attention because we can select A times B because it's going to lead us to a wrong result. What I need to do here is multiply A times itself. Equal sign A times A again. And to multiply things in Excel, we can use the asterisk symbol. Let me press enter and we're done. So 7 times 7 is equal to 49. Yes, it's correct. The, the last one, the fourth operation that we need to create here is subtract B from A. B from A is basically the A minus B. So equal sign A minus B or subtract B from A. If I press enter, we're done here with the first question, question A. Now the second question, the question B is about uh, the VLOOKUP function. Use the VLOOKUP function and return the corresponding values of the items. So we have here a couple of different items, such as A, B, C, and D, and each one of those items has a corresponding value, such as, let's say, the item B is equal to $9.99. Now, in this blank list that I have underneath, I need to automatically take all those corresponding values to all those different items that I have. And of course, the VLOOKUP function is actually a really good function because we can automate tasks like this one right here. Equal sign VLOOKUP function, double click to select, one, two. This is basically the difference between a function and a formula in Excel. Because a function, we need to call it equal sign VLOOKUP. We need to type in the name of the function. This is a function. And a formula, we don't need to do it. Let's say a formula is what we did before. Equal sign, a number, times another number, add to another number. Okay, so this is a formula. It's different than use a function such as VLOOKUP. Double click, one, two. And within the VLOOKUP function, there is four different arguments. Let's start with the first one that is the lookup value, is the value that I need to look for. So this value is the item C. So I can select here the cell that I have to the left. Choma. Now, what is, what is the table array that I want to use to look up for the items? I want to use the first column where I have the items, but it's very important to click, hold, and drag down, and also to drag to the right to make sure we can select the entire table. Because even though I'm looking for the items, I also want to bring it back as result, the values. So I need to select both the items and also the values. Now the column index number represents the column that I want to bring it back as result. And as I select this range right here, my first column is where I have the items, and the second column is where I have the values. And as I want to bring back the values, I need to input here the number two, two, comma, and now I want to have an exactly match. Double click, one, two, close parentheses, enter, and we're done. If I click in this cell where we did the function, in the down right corner of the cell, click, hold, and drag down, look what's gonna happen, like this, and yeah, we done, basically, we got some errors here, let's understand why we got these errors. But uh, anyway, as you can see, almost everything automatically returns with uh, the correct value.
we got some errors because whenever we click hold and drag down a function in Excel, all the references, let's say double click in, a, in any row here, whenever we click hold and drag down a function, all those references is going to move down. And unfortunately, it's also true to the range that we are using to look up for those values. So instead of fix this range in the same position, it's also moving down. But uh, how can I fix this range in the same position? Let me read it off all those functions that I did. But the first one, okay, so delete everything. I'm going to open the first one. And uh, this range right here, B19 up to C22, I just need to select everything. And then I'm going to press the F4 key to basically lock those references. And uh, that way, Excel is going to append the dollar sign before the column and before the row, before the column and before the row. If I press Enter, as you can see, the first result is exactly the same, but if I click hold and drag down the function, now I have everything working perfectly. And this is how we can use the VLOOKUP function in Excel and to solve this radical problem. Now, and also, it's how can we lock and freeze references in Excel. Now, the last question is the question C, where basically we have C1 and C2. So, two more questions to go. And here we need to, using the example below, or this example right here, Solve the question C1 with the count if function and the question C2 with the count A function. And why this question right here gives an example? Because I think the count if function and also the count A, both of those functions are not that common. Okay, they are very common, but they aren't that common as the VLOOKUP function, for example. So this is why I think this question right here give us this example on how to use the count a function and also the count if because we can see how to use it and then apply in a different situation to solve this radical problem so let's take a look here we have the result of the corresponding functions and then we have the function the structure of the functions and then the data set that are being used as the data to the functions the count a function in excel basically is going to count everything that you have so as you can see here, equal sign count A, and uh, within the parentheses, we have this range right here. And basically, we have as a result the number five, because in this range, we have five cells with something. So they are not blank cells. They have something in that. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. But now if we move on here to the count if function, it's kind of different, because the count if function is not going to count everything, but just with this thing matches with the criteria that you are using. So let's say the range is the same as before, but now in between quotations mark, I have my criteria. There is the letter A. So A appears one, two, three times. So this is why I got here three as a result. Now that we just understand how to use both of those functions, let's solve here the last two questions. C.1 or C1. Count the number of orders on January 15th of 2024. And this question is clear that uh, my criteria is the date, January 15th of 2024. So I need to use as the range all the dates that I have, but I can now only count the dates that corresponds to my criteria. One, two, and then three, four. Okay, four. So let's use here equal sign count if function wants you to select. As the range, as we saw, I can select the date, comma, as my criteria. It's very important to input this date, but uh, within quotations mark. So open quotations and then January 15th of 2024. Close quotations, close parentheses, and then enter. Yes, I got here for as result, and it's correct as we saw before. C2, count the number of orders, or basically count the numbers of rows in other words. We have here many different orders, one, two, three, four, five, and on and on, till the last row. But instead of manually count everything, we can use the count a function. And here we can also select any different column. If I want to select the total column, it's going to return the same result as if I select the item columns or if I select the date or the quantity, whatever, because the count a function counts the cells that has something within. Okay, so I can basically select any column that I want to use. Equal sign count a function, double click, one, two. And then the range that I want to use, I'm going to stick with, let's say, the total, like this. And then I'm going to press enter. As you can see, I have 17 different orders. So this is how we can solve this Excel test that came up in a job interview. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope this video can help you out. And I see you tomorrow. As every day has a new video, I see you there.